<laughs> Hello kiddos, Sir ESC here and today we're going to discuss about non-Mendelian inheritance focusing on incomplete dominance and this is for the grade 9. After the time of Mendel, as scientists studied more traits, other principles were formulated. This include the following. Incomplete dominance, codominance, multiple allelism, sex determination, and sex linkage. For this particular lesson, we're going to focus on incomplete dominance. So this will be a series of lesson on non-Mendelian inheritance. Kaya naman, do not forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will always be updated on the new lesson. Incomplete dominance is described as pure line genes crossed with recessive genes results to appearance of a third trait intermediate between the dominant and recessive. For us to visualize this, let's have this analogy. Dominant is color blue. Then it is crossed with a recessive trait, which is color yellow. Following the Mendelian laws, our expected answer would be blue. Because since blue is a dominant trait and mixed with recessive trait, then it will be the one appearing in the offspring. However, in incomplete dominance, the result will be green. That is, the third trait intermediate between the dominant and recessive trait. Let's have some concrete examples. Color of flower. This will be our trait. Then we have two options. It's either red or white. The red flower is represented by a capital R, meaning that it is a dominant trait, while white flower is represented by a small r, meaning that it is the recessive trait. The red flower will be represented as two capital R. And this is what we mean by pure line. It means that it is composed of homozygous combination of genes or allele, while the white is represented by two small letter R. Following the law of segregation, we know that this two capital R and this two small R will be segregated into two. But for easier analysis, we will just simplify it representing as single R and small r. But again, there should be splitting or segregation. And this can be found in the gametes. Now, when the plant with red flower is crossed with the plant with the white flower, the result would be a capital R and a small r. And its color would be tama, pink. Again, in incomplete dominance, we will form the third trait, which is intermediate between the dominant and recessive trait. In this case, the intermediate third trait would be pink flower. So what does this mean? It means that every time the plant with red flower and the plant with the white flower breed or cross, they will always produce pink flowers or a plant producing pink flower. Because based on analysis, they will always have 100% probability of producing this. Let's answer drill number one. If a rabbit with black fur is crossed with a white rabbit, what is the expected phenotype of F1? Let's try to analyze this. 
So again, these are our legends or symbols for the color of fur. Capital B is for black fur and small b for white fur. And then capital B and small b would represent gray fur. Take note, the symbol that is used for this analysis depends on the rule set by the teacher or depending on the reference you use. In my class, kung ano ang unang letter ng dominant trait, ayon yung ginagamit kong representation or letter to represent the traits. Like for example, black is the dominant trait. Therefore, I use capital B for black. Then, small b for the recessive trait. Let's proceed. So, the black rabbit is represented as two capital B. Then, the white one is represented by two small b. So, again, law of segregation. Uulitin ko. Supposedly, we should have two capital B and two small b. But for a much simpler analysis, we will just represent it as one. Okay? And again, this can be found in the gametes. So when the gametes of the black and the white rabbits combine together, they will form a capital B and small b. Therefore, the phenotype of their generation or F1 would always be gray. Again, this is 100% gray. It means that every time they will cross or they will breed, then they will always produce offspring with gray fur. Let's have drill number two. If two gray rabbits are crossed, what are the phenotypes of F2? Tingnan nga natin kung ano yung mga magiging result. We're gonna use the same symbols. We have two gray rabbits represented by a capital B and small b. Now, law of segregation. During the formation of gametes, their sperm or egg cell may have a capital B or small b. We know that the capital B is for black fur and small b represents the white fur trait. And so, for analysis, let's use the Punnett square. This symbol is for male. So we will just assume that one is, of course, male. Then the other one is female. So both of them produce a capital B and small b. Let's use this for our analysis. So when we cross it, the capital B, we will have this result. Next. We have capital B and small b. Third, capital B and small b. Then lastly, two small b. For the analysis, I typically use numbers or I numbered the cell from left to right and downward just like this one. Then, let us now describe their phenotypes. One, since it is composed of two capital B, it means that it's a black fur. Two is gray fur. Three is another gray fur. Then four is a white fur. So what do we mean by this result? We could have a phenotypic ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. It means that 1 black, 2 gray, and 1 
white or in percentage, it could be represented as 25% is to 50% is to 25%. Hmm, so anong ibig sabihin nito? It only means that every time the two gray rabbits will breed or produce offspring, there will always be a 25% chance that they will produce a black fur baby. And another 25% is a white fur baby rabbit. Or there is always a 50% chance of having a gray fur baby rabbit. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga percentage na to, it represents the probability or chance. Gaano kalaki yung chance na ganito yung magiging kulay ng anak nila. Again, 25% for black, 50% for gray, and 25% for white. To intensify your understanding with this lesson, I want you to answer this practice drill. This drills will be posted in the comment section para naman pwede ninyong balikan. Ulit, grab this opportunity to apply what you have learned from this video para mas maunawaan nyo pa yung lesson. Aside from practice drill number one, we have practice drill number two. The type of hair is an example of incomplete dominance. We have straight, curly, and producing wavy hair. I hope that you can apply what you have learned from this video as you answer this practice drills. And that's it. We are done with our lesson. I hope that you have learned something new today. At wag kakalimutang mag-like, share, at subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you again in my next video. Bye-bye and God bless. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs>